Welcome back, guys, to Friday Facts number 392 with me, Massive Dynamic. This one is posted by CoverX, and it's called Parametrized Blueprints. Now, if you're like me, then you've never heard the word parametrized before, so I looked it up, and it's basically the British-English version of the word parameterize. And parameterize is a simple de definition, and that is to describe or represent in terms of a parameter or parameters. So what this Friday Facts is all about is the fact that now blueprints are able to be written once and using variables, you can change all of the items in the blueprint so that you, that can be variable per station. Basically, as Kovrex will say, he was setting up a lot of stations and he was trying to use one blueprint for them all, but he had to go back in and reset a number of different things, and that got to be a little bit tedious. So he designed this parameterized blueprints, which is parameterized to us who speak American English. So I will use parameterized as he does, and also he uses parameter throughout also. Uh, so I'll read the words as they are, but know that if you speak British English, then you're going to get confused by parameterized. And if you speak American English, you're going to get confused by parametrized. But either way, um, I think I'm just going to have to read this one, at least most of it, guys, because it's a little bit complex and I don't um, know how to simplify it much more than I just did. Basically, I gave you the rundown on it, uh, but there's a lot of details in here that uh, I think you pretty much need to read through if you're going to be able to understand and use these new blueprints. So here we go. He says, hello, I'm going to cover a feature I only just finished. I was thinking about this idea already for years. I always thought the feature is too hardcore to be included, but I learned that it's usually a mistake to underestimate the players. So I gave it a go and decided to share it right away. Motivation. The most common motivational example is the train unloading station. Typically, I have the whole setup in a blueprint, rail, train stop, filtered inserters, etc. This is nice, but whenever I build the blueprint, I need to reconfigure all the filtered inserters for the target item and also change the name of a stop, and it is tedious. So here we have a one minute and 30 second video. I'm not gonna play the whole video, but it's basically setting up blueprints, of a train station and then having to go in and change all the filter inserters manually. Okay, which we all know is time consuming and it's even sped up. Okay, so uh, he says there are two ways to solve it in 1.1. One, you can use a circuit network, but he says that feels more like overkill and you can't set the train stop names by circuit network. And number two, having specific blueprint for each item, which sounds like a nightmare. So yeah, if you had an iron blueprint, a copper blueprint, a stone blueprint, etc. Okay, so parametrized blueprints. This naturally leads to the definition of what we want. We want to have a blueprint which doesn't have a specific item configuration, but rather is generic and allows you to configure it differently each time you build it. The question is how to implement it without adding unnecessary GUI clutter in the way, unless we care about the specific feature. Reconfiguring existing blueprints. The first piece of the puzzle is a tool to reconfigure existing blueprints. For simplicity, let's take this example of a constant combinator configured like this. So here we have a simple constant combinator. And as you can see, there's a lot more going on with constant combinators now, but it's basically fairly simple, iron and copper at five and X at seven. When we make a blueprint of it, we can now access the new main tool used for reconfiguration. So now there's a new tool when you use a blueprint and that's this parametrization. Okay, so here it is. Here's your iron value of five, your copper is also a value of five and your X is a value of seven. Apparently, once you put in this value, then that value carries to the next item. It seems that way because here's your 
iron, your value of five, and then your copper, it it seems to inherit the same value. But then when you put in your X, you put in a new value of seven. Okay, the first and most simple usage of this UI is to change all occurrences of some item or number in a blueprint to something else. If I want to change all the places where X signal is used in the blueprint to be Y, I just change the value in the UI and confirm. The blueprint was just pre-configured, the same with changing all fives in a blueprint. Practically every setting and number you can have in an entity can be reconfigured by this feature. Inserter filters, assembler recipes, circuit network settings, combinator configuration, logistic requests, inventory filters, even rich text icons. The last one can be used to change the name of the train stop as long as you make it a rich text part of it. This is already an improvement as you can always reconfigure the blueprint to a different item before building it, but it still isn't good enough. That leads us to parameters. The first step was to define special IDs called parameters for items, recipes, fluids, and entities. So now we have these new parameter icons that can be used in our filters, zero through nine. These have no meaning outside of the parametrization context. They are used just for the blueprint generic configuration. They are normally not selectable anywhere in the game outside the blueprint configuration menu, but for power users, there's an interface setting to make them actually available everywhere. So that sounds like it's in the F4 menu. So back to the original blueprint, we can configure it like this. So once again, Basically, this is the same thing. This zero then becomes a variable that you can swap out for your iron or your, your copper. Uh, this time the value is five, so there's your iron and copper. And then here is your, what was the third item of seven? I think it was um, X. Okay, so here I specified all the three IDs to be parameters. And the number five is used in both of the items to be parameterized as well. Filling up the name is not necessary, but is useful for the user of the blueprint to know what he is asked for in the next steps when the blueprint is being built. Whenever you try to build a blueprint configured this way, you get a small dialog where you are asked to fill parameters for the specific instance of the blueprint. Okay, so for number one, for number two, what you want is five and then the control signal. And he says, I care about details. So you can even see how the build preview changes and the parameters are being specified. So here we will watch this 22 second video because this shows the use of that GUI in detail. So you'll see here that there's your blueprint. And as you fill in these icons, they automatically change on your, on your blueprint in your alt mode and it fills fills up everything and then when you hit the button it go, goes ahead and prints the blueprint so all alt icons update as the parameters are chosen which is pretty cool and once you press confirm the blueprint is built with the desired configurations and here's another 30 second um, video and I love the new ghosts. I love the new ghosts because you can actually see that it's a ghost now other than just an item that you can't tell. You, just, you can tell because you can't walk into it. That's the only way you can tell it's a ghost in the present game. Okay, so anyway, here we go with the new blueprint. So he sets the gears and uh, coils. And that sets up all of, all of his filters. So it's basically the same as the first video except now it's much quicker and easier. And everything is set up here by this simple GUI interface. Very nice, okay. All right, so dependent parameters. So this is already useful, but still not good enough. Why? Because sometimes parameters are expected to be related to each other and forcing the user of the blueprint to always fill them up correctly is not good form. What do I mean by the dependencies? Let's say I have a blueprint to craft an item with three ingredients, which are parameters one, two, and three, and take the ingredients from the train network. Naturally, I can make a big setup with three input stations, each 
parametrized to be one of the inputs and row of assembling machines, parametrized to create the desired item. But whenever I want to build this blueprint, I would have to remember and manually fill the three ingredients for the desired item, which would only slow me down, but also open the possibility of mistakes. This is why parameters can be configured to be an ingredient of another parameter automatically instead of having to fill it in. Okay, so here is your new interface for how to set up this kind of basically a complete program for setting up your blueprints. Parameter one, two, and three are set to be the ingredients of parameter zero. So when this blueprint is being built, only the value of parameter zero is asked for and the remaining values are automatically filled out. Dependent numbers. With number configuration, the way the dependency can be set is much more free as math exists. Let's look at this example. Okay, so here's another one where we have a value of 100, which is X. Value is 101, where X, uh, the formula is X plus one, so it's 100 plus one to give you 101. And then here the value is 200, which is X times two. And then you have a yellow belt and a red belt. Okay, now we have a blueprint where three numbers are present, 100, 101, and 200. But for some reason, we only want the user to modify the value of 100 but the contraption just needs the second number to be one bigger and the third number to be double the first. This is why each parametrized number can be assigned a variable and its value can be used in math formulas in all of the subsequent dependent numbers. So in this case, if you fill upon building the blueprint, the 100 to be a 10 instead, it will automatically set the 101 to be an 11 and the 200 to be 20. So in other words, if you use this in your little GUI, you would put, instead of 100 here, you would put a 10 in and you would automatically get 11 and 20. Conclusion. Factorio has been compared to programming many times and this is just another part of the analogy. Almost everything you can do with parametrized blueprints can be done through circuit network logic. So it looks almost redundant. Now this paragraph I have read 10 times and I do not understand this paragraph. I don't know if it's a translation issue or it's a thinking issue. Maybe his thinking is that far above mine, but I, this paragraph makes absolutely no sense to me, but I'm gonna read it to you. In programming, the parallel is the compile time function execution versus the runtime function execution. Basically, if you know the result of the computation already while compiling the program, it would be a waste to calculate it every time the program is ran. You could just put the number directly into the program. Okay, now that first sentence, I completely understand. Yeah, if you know that the answer to the question that you're asking is going to be 10 every time, then there's no reason to ask the question every time in your program. Just insert the number 10. But this next sentence is the one that I don't get. Okay, so I'm going to read it. It says, which is very similar to knowing that this setup will always be filtered to take iron gear wheels. So it feels a little bit wasteful to make a circuit network logic around it just to simplify the building process. Now I've read it again and I still, I still don't know what he's saying there. So if you know what that means, then let me know in the comments. Finally, he says, I would love to hear your feedback about this feature. Is it too much? Is it understandable? Can't you wait to use it? Let us know on the usual channels. So this is uh, just advanced programming techniques for using your blueprints. So I think it does have its uses. I don't know that I would use it as much as apparently um, he does. Well, I, get, I, I don't use, I don't typically don't use filtered inserters on my train stations. And I guess it might be handy for a generic blueprint. Yeah, I guess it would be handy for a generic blueprint uh, where you have a three ingredient process. Like, you know, so many, so many items in Factorio are a three ingredient process. So yeah, you could set up one blueprint and you would have two belts input and one belt output. And then you could just use parameters to set up the blueprint and then just stamp it down for each of your different uh, items that you're making. Yeah, that would be a great usage for that. I'm sure you have other uses for it, but that is it for this one. Thanks guys. Hopefully the next one will be a little bit more 
uh, generically interesting to everyone. I know a lot of us love to use blueprints and this new feature, I think we will fall in love with once we use it, but I want to see some nitty gritty. I want to see some new planets, some new enemies, all that kind of stuff. So we'll look forward to seeing that next week. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you then. Bye-bye.